at school, we had a swimming lesson. And oh. so I thought I'd go in my costume, you know, with my uniform. No. Just because you don't want to get changed in front of people, do you? Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, Mel loves getting changed in front of people. <laughs> 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 when I went to put my clothes back on afterwards, I remember I hadn't brought my knickers. No knicks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you'd be in a skirt as well, obviously, at school. From anyone else, Rylan, that'd be really creepy, but not from you. No. I'm not. <laughs> I, I was always in the girls' changing room. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Every time swimming come along, I was on my period more than the girls. Let me tell you. <laughs> so what happened? I was the first one out and I, I stole someone else's knickers. <laughs> Yeah. She was the tallest girl in the class and, and knickers were really big for me. <laughs> so they sat everyone down and was like, someone has stolen her knickers. <laughs> I didn't say anything. But then all day, I, they, they kept, like, riding down. Riding down. Yeah. I had to put a knot in them. <laughs> and then the girl who it was, because she got sort of picked on, you know, because they knew she didn't have any knickers on her day. Oh, no. Yeah, and she got pregnant at 17, and I always wondered if it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried um, cat shit before. What? <laughs> I wonder if sheep who might be even Lucy? nicer than L that. No, Lucy. Lucy. <laughs> Yeah, Shit is the when worst. When I was a kid, I tried some. Just, Why? Just to see what all the fuss was about. <laughs> Lucy, I am ask you a serious question. A and I'd, I'd never like to ask this to a lady, but how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Not to. How have you got to fault me? <laughs> you know, everyone wonders that. <laughs> I've never been run over or anything. <laughs> Forget what I did, but... <laughs> what I mean is, I don't think sheep poo would be that bad because they eat grass. <laughs> Did you not throw up, though, after eating cat shit? I didn't eat loads of it. I just literally tried a little bit. Because, you know, uh, she said she ate... <laughs> <laughs> it's making me feel so... Uh, yes. Am I on Ant and Deck again? Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding? It's making me burp. Can oh, we stop? God. <laughs> You're literally like crying. <laughs> I can't believe... Cat shit, for me, is worse than dog, yeah? <laughs> so... When you're a kid, you sort of get really into things, right, as a teenager. I was really into, uh, fascinated by tidal waves, um, uh, suspension bridges <laughs> and um, e enemas. Oh. <laughs> I was like, wow, what is that? Like, coffee enemas? Like, what the fuck? Enemas? Like, what, what's the deal with enemas? Does it involve your ass? I feel like, like you of... would know, Carol. I what, do know. Yeah. <laughs> One. Right, I tell have. us everything. Which type of coffee do you get? I prefer a mild roast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is fascinating. Yes, now it's it even is. more Sorry. fascinating. Sorry. Yes. Um, so, when I was 14, my sister went on a gap year to Australia. Right. Uh, and we all went to visit her, me and my two sisters and my mum and dad, and we stayed in a really nice hotel. Lovely. Because my dad's a famous actor. So, <laughs> we... and it was like a spa hotel, and Ooh. there was this beautiful swimming pool. And I was oh, in the swimming pool... Lovely. ..thinking about suspension bridges, <laughs> tidal waves <laughs> and enemas. <laughs> and, you know, in pools, they've got those, like, jet things. <laughs> like underneath. No, yeah, the you things that, like, blow up the water. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 like the yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a big pool. <laughs> it was me in one corner and I saw them. And then in the other end of the pool, there was a woman and, like, a four-year-old toddler they were playing in the other end of the pool. So I was like, I'm going to give myself an enema. <laughs> so... <laughs> so... <laughs> down, down, so with the, yeah, down, yeah, down with the... Yeah, down with the... Down with the... Because so, so, no-one can see what's going on beneath the waterline, can they? <laughs> um, uh, so I sort of backed up against it. <laughs> I was 14. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, OK, that's what an enema feels like. And before I knew what was what... Did it feel good? No. It was all right! Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> it was all right. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> that pause was so telling, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. It felt all right. But before I could really work out how good or strange or whatever it felt, a little poo popped out my bum. <laughs> Not little, a 14-year-old. Yeah. Massive turd. turd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw it float past me. Wow! And then, before I could say anything, my mum was like, Oh, my 
God, there's a poo in the pool. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, that baby just pooed in the pool. <laughs> it was that four-year-old who did it. Wow. It's another shit story, guys. Oh. Uh... Oh, hello. Hey, I think your stories are good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one that involves name-dropping. I can only... Oh, I love it. Come on. Glenn Close. <gasps> so, when I was young, I did one of my first acting jobs and she was so kind to me. I was 19 and she's phenomenal. She's as wonderful as you would imagine. And um, she invited me to stay in a house uh, with other people. I was staying in this beautiful Glenn Close mansion. Wow. And she doesn't know this, but I doubt she watches this show. What? She might. Surely. <laughs> so, it was the end of the stay. She'd organised some cars to take us to the airport. And I needed a poo. So, I did a poo. <laughs> in the ensuite bathroom area of the room. Um, and the toilet got blocked. And you know when the toilet gets blocked sometimes, you flush it, it starts to come up. Oh. Yeah? Yes. And there's nothing you can do about it. Awful. It keeps coming and coming and coming, and then it goes all over the floor. <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> the poo, um, toilet paper, all of the relevant detritus that one would imagine. Everywhere. Oh. And there's a knock on the door going, Rafe, the car's here, we've really got to go. I, like, I can't leave it in this... Situations. So in the cupboard, there was a beautiful set of towels. But I um, went there, I did the best I could. And then it's like, what do you do with the towels? So I just sort of wrapped them all up and left them in what I can only describe as I hope an occasional cupboard. So it wasn't one of those cupboards that people would look in enough. Occasional? Yeah, because my thinking was it wasn't the sort of cupboard that the cleaners the next day would look in. But no, Rafe, Rafe, Rafe. No, that's even worse. You need someone to collect them immediately. If it's an occasional cover, they might not find them for a year. Imagine it, the smell. Yes, it's a terrible thing to admit. I thought that was the point of the show. Yes, it is. So, so, um... Oh, my... I, uh, so, that's sorry, nice. sorry, Dave. I was, um, doing this play in a theatre called The Royal Court. And at the beginning of the play, the audience came in and I was already in a bed. And the covers were over my head so that people couldn't see who it was, but they could see there was someone in the bed. Basically, I want to apologise to some audience members in that show. OK. Right? The first thing that I want to apologise to them for was they were sat there and I could hear them saying, oh, I'm so excited um, about this. I've always wanted to see Timothy Spall in a play. Um... <laughs> Uh, and I can't believe he's doing a play in such a small theatre. This is really exciting. I'm under there going, you're going to be so disappointed when I come out of it. <laughs> what a shame. And yet, if it was a bed with a man in, I'd rather you than your dad. Oh. Because I've already been there. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. You've done that, you've done that. So then the play starts, and then what I'm supposed to do is, someone else comes in, and I'm in boxer shorts, and that's it, and I'm supposed to uh, get out of the bed and then sit up on the bed like this. And there's people about as close as you are now to me, and I got out of the bed, I sat like this, and I saw the same people who were expecting Timothy Spall oh. just do this. <gasps> oh, no. And then I could just feel that my entire cock and balls was out. Oh. 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 Right. I didn't want to, like, look down. Oh, so no. you got to do a thing of maintaining eye contact whilst having a sort of cabinet reshuffle, trying to get it back, <laughs> trying to get it back in there, you That's know. Right. Yeah, and they were having a bad time. They wanted Timothy Spall, they got Timothy Ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for a reason. <laughs> I went on holiday with my parents when I was young. I got really ill, did a massive shit, surprise, surprise, <laughs> that was so big that it wouldn't flush. Rafe, what's wrong with your I don't. I was a disgusting kid. <laughs> So, wouldn't go down the toilet. The toilet was blocked again. Uh, <laughs> so, my dad got a coat hanger and tried to chop it up. We've uh, all been there, guys. Come on. We've all been there. The thing is, it's one of those coat hangers that, like, don't have the hook so you don't steal them. Oh, yeah. But it turns out you can steal them if they're covered in shit. <laughs> we recently, yeah. I was on the first date. So I thought I'll impress her by taking her to a member's bar. Oh. Because I am a fucking big deal. <laughs> 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 and in there was Greg Davies, Alex Horn, 
and Tim Kitch. So on one hand, I wanted to come across as a lovely day, but on the other hand, I really want to be on Touch Master. <laughs> <laughs> so I took this as an audition for Touch and there was an attack to do me out <laughs> on the show. <laughs> and it looked very expensive. I don't know why, but you know the phrase. Shall we get some chips for the table? Yeah. I started to say, shall we get an owl for the table? <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> the date was now on my knees. Whoa. I was like the godfather. <laughs> <laughs> So I ran it up and I said, Tim, get me an owl for the table. <laughs> so we went over and carried this match attack to do me owl back for the godfather. <laughs> Security. Came, <laughs> they were shouting, they were swearing, <laughs> their boys collectively shut them down. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at the security guard banging the eye Lovely. and went, What are you shouting for? And they went, Cause you fucking moved the tax and me owl, you can't fucking do that! <laughs> <laughs> and I went, well, now I know. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, please unburden yourself. Yeah, I'm doing quite well. <laughs> I like to treat myself to a weekly matter. Nice. Um, and we got to know each other. We started talking a bit. But during the match, I like to be quiet. I like to enjoy it. Also, I am very nearly naked. <laughs> and then the shoes, unfortunately, were going for rental problems. Right. And more and more, week on week, she kept bringing all her problems. Mm to me, and I'm quite a political person, and I speak out about how shit the world is, but I really want to have a lovely match <laughs> with a blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And I know it's shit, and I understand that me getting a massage in the house that I have bought <laughs> is privilege on privilege. <laughs> but she's a bit complaining, <laughs> so I'll let her go. Oh. <laughs> Am I a bag of shit? I think you are a bag of shit, Rosie. <laughs> she wrapped you up the wrong way, didn't she? Oh. <laughs> she just killed her vibe. Yeah. I totally agree. If you're having a massage, you want a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Have you got that tenner you owe me? Only it's getting a bit awkward now. It's round four. Where Lou 
has been prowling the streets of Britain with her honesty horse, the only stable relationship she's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Please bring on the audio-visual equipment. OK, let's see the first honesty horse, please. You will never know what that means to me. That is everything, everything! <laughs> we love you, boys, we love you. <laughs> Sorry, that's Melly's special nighttime video. Uh, <laughs> I use it to relax. <laughs> What's that? That's me watching England win a penalty shootout. We don't win penalty shootouts. Unless you're the women's team. Of course. <laughs> yeah. the Excellent. Panel, it's up to you to fill in the blanks. OK, so listen carefully. We've got Joanna. Your dirty little secret has run its course It's time to confess to the honesty horse <laughs> Joanna! Hello! What a nice face! Oh, thank you! Yeah. And you too! Oh, thank you! What disgusting things have you done? <sighs> well, I once went on a date with this guy mm. and he was so sweet and, you know, those guys that are just really lovely but he was too short. Oh. And also, to make it worse, he travelled for an hour to come and see me. Did it take so long because of his little legs? He took me to this really fancy cocktail bar. He was spending so much money. And so I felt really guilty, like I just didn't want to leave him there high and dry. Mm. So I said, I'm going to have to pretend... <laughs> You're a bitch. <laughs> so, Joanna there, but what did she pretend to this nice, diminutive man to get out of the date she didn't want to be on. Rosie, straight in there. Did she shit herself? <laughs> <laughs> and she had to go, oh, I'm really sorry. I'm having a lovely day, but <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> you <just> shat myself. <laughs> Anyone else? Got it. Oh, Shirley. I wonder whether she got there and she saw this little short man with his little short legs and whatever else was short on the evening, and I think that she probably <laughs> choked on her olive. <laughs> <laughs> like this, and he just looked at her and she goes, I gotta go, I gotta go. I think she choked to get out of it. Choked on an olive or shat herself? <laughs> Ross. I think that she turned around to him and said, I don't like short men, why don't you fuck off? <laughs> Let's find out from Joanna. What was it she did? Mm. So I said, I'm going to have to pretend to be sick. <laughs> so then when he went home, I texted my friend saying, can you believe that I pretend to be sick to get out of the date? And then I realised I accidentally texted him. <laughs> did he text back saying, oh, I can't believe I pretended to be short to get rid of that girl? I don't mind little men. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mel accidentally texted me once saying I was a twat. That wasn't an accident. <laughs> For us, Luigi. Yeah, Hello. Hi. What's your name? I'm Stacey. Well, go on in, tell us your story. Well, I was pregnant with my third child. We had planned a gender reveal party. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> my partner still doesn't know, so this is how my partner's oh. going to find out. Oh, wow. <laughs> Right, gang, Stacey there was planning a gender reveal party. Is that for a baby or is that...? Yeah, for that's yeah. for a baby. <laughs> that's for a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Generally, like, it's a bit late now, Mel. I think people just assume you're a woman. OK. Yeah. Well, it, you know, it's all fluid these days. It's fluid, you never, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Unforgivable in itself, a gender reveal party. Yeah. What the hecking heck? did she do that her partner still doesn't know about? Ross? I think that she didn't tell him that she was having an affair with his brother. <gasps> Very East Sender. I was going to say... Doof, 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 doof.
Shirley. Maybe she had a gender reveal party minus the husband. Maybe she took off all their clothes, showed a hairy Mary and wiggled her boobies because it was a girl <laughs> in front of all their friends, maybe, without the husband. <laughs> Let's reveal. Stacey, over to you. <laughs> I went to hospital, but I went without um, my partner mm. for the scan, and I'd already made a decision that I'm going to find out the sex because I need to know. So um, I found out the sex from the nurse, then we had a gender reveal. Hey, is it boy or girl? Nah, it's a horse. <laughs> oh, well... There we go. Yeah. In 2003, I did a film with Gwyneth Paltrow, and the day before filming, I'd just arrived late night from a little comedy tour and I didn't have enough clean clothes, so I didn't have any underwear. So I went through my, my son, who was 10 at the time. I saw he had a pair of swimming trunks. I thought, that they'll do. So I, I put on his swimming trunks, which were very tight, the 10-year-old tight. Really tight. I went on set with this. So what happened was, I'm there in the break, just kind of doing this, kind of go. <laughs> and then Gwyneth Paltrow said, what are you doing? I said, well, you know how it is, Gwyneth, when you wear your 10-year-old son's swimming trunks and the pubes get stuck. To the top. <laughs> she went, no. I... <laughs> Jude Law's behind her going, don't, don't, don't. He <laughs> took me to one side and goes, don't. I, I said, she hates me. She goes, she doesn't hate you, she doesn't understand you. Ask her about her because she's not big on humour. So I said, you look really beautiful, Gwyneth. How do you look so good? And she said, well, it's my macrobiotic <laughs> diet. <laughs> She goes, I drink water and I go to bed early. And I, as a judge, I said, that's funny. Last night, I got home late and I had a Fanta and a kebab and I was masturbating to the sky at night to repeat. <laughs> and you got Jude Law going, no, no, no. But I was determined to make her laugh. So she's in the dressing room next to me singing songs with her husband, Chris Martin. Oh, dear. Who I said hello to. She goes, oh, I saw you at the comedy store six months ago. You're so funny. And I thought she knew I was a comedian. I thought they both knew me. So I'm banging on the wall going, stop that fucking caterwauling! <laughs> fucking shut up! Like that. And I can hear her saying, I don't like him. And Chris Martin going, he's just a comedian. <laughs> and literally, last week, oh. I got a phone call from Bruce Hills, who runs the Montreal Comedy Festival. He goes, there was a big comedy night, and Chris Martin, who loves comedy, he was there. And Bruce said, I wanted to just confirm that this story about you and Gwyneth Paltrow was true, because <laughs> now they're divorced. And Chris Martin said, he goes, do you mean Omid Jalili? And he said, yes. He goes, oh, my God, that guy is my hero. <laughs> Because they're split now, and I think it's because they had a sense of humour. I was just trying to make her laugh, but it just was really going disastrously. I think it's nice of Gwyneth to speak to the extras. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard she's just released a new candle. The fragrance is 3am kebab wank, <laughs> so... <laughs> something went well. Something went well for you. So, my lovely husband, Propose in the Atlas Mountains. Oh. oh, it was lovely, and I wasn't expecting it. The ring was really pretty. It was like an antique ring. Oh, nice. Oh. You didn't have any idea he was going to propose to you? No. Right, OK, so only one person's asked me to marry them, which is kind of unbelievable. But I knew he was going to ask me to marry him because he said, like, what size is your ring finger? And I was like, oh, you're going to ask me to marry you? And he said, no, I want to see if it'll fit on my bumhole. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. It did, yeah. And it did? Yeah, it did, yeah. <laughs> We went to a nearby hotel. We had some drinks. Somehow we got back to Marrakesh. And you're now in Marrakesh. Marrakesh. Oh, oh that's you. nice. You're now in Marrakesh. <laughs> Lovely. So we got shit first. And <laughs> then on the way back to the Riyadh, I realised that beautiful antique ring no. was no longer on finger. Oh, oh, no. oh that's that's. Oh, that makes me itchy. <laughs> so I thought, well, if I sit to my hand... No. You more no. <laughs> so went to bed in the morning. We went down for a day out. Yeah. And I was getting a bit sweaty, you know, because it was going to become obvious and he was any minute going to say, where's that ring? And the woman at reception said, are you missing something? And I was like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> And she was like, are you sure? I was like, she's like, oh, because a taxi driver brought in this 
ring wow. and said it was yours. Very oh, cool. you got wow. it. Wow. And that's a great story. But, oh, my goodness, the mini row <laughs> over brunch. <laughs> oh, wow. I love the idea it was a mini row. Yeah, because we just got engaged. Now we would be a massive, like, divorce. <laughs> <laughs> Go back eight or nine years. Let's picture Paul McKenna. And he said, I want to hypnotise you. But I want to do it as a pre-record so that then we can play it out on the show and then you can react to seeing yourself <gasps> hypnotised. Great. Oh, cool. Well, that's brilliant. Yeah. All right. And he started his, you know, hypnotic... Banter. <laughs> Ten, nine. Anyway, when we got to one, I thought, oh, I'm not hypnotised. <laughs> <laughs> so instead, in a split second, I made the decision to go with it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then he started asking me to do all these things. In Point. this day and age, you're going to have to be more specific. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, uh, now then, you are a gardener. <laughs> the next thing I know, I am then getting up out of my chair with my eyes closed and being a gardener. And I thought, well, all right, fine, that'll be the end of that. No. <laughs> you have now won the Grand National. Oh, no. Oh, Here God. We go. Oh, Alex. Oh, no. <laughs> right, off she goes. <laughs> and I knew exactly what was going on. But it was too late. I was in too deep. You know, I said I just didn't want to be impolite. Women do a lot of things because they don't want to be rude. Thank you, Lou. <laughs> That's why I've got three kids. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all Paul McGinnis. <laughs> <laughs> and so then I had to go through the whole thing of pulling me out of the trance, <laughs> lie down again, and back in the room. Oh, God, what happened? <laughs> the live show that evening, they play in the footage back to me. And there I was in a box having to react. <gasps> oh. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't believe I did that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then afterwards, I had to tell my editor. I wasn't hypnotised then. <laughs> he was like, oh, my God, BBC guidelines, you've lied. <laughs> oh, sure. I mean, well done, though, for just blooming seeing it through. Lucy. So, this is uh, illegal. <laughs> so when I was living in Hull and I was an actress, I used to go for auditions and you sort of get a phone call and they say, can you come down to London the next day? Train tickets, so expensive. Yeah. So, I found ways of not paying. Most of the train guards were men of a certain age. So, when they came to collect your ticket, what I would do is just get a bag of tampons and just put them all over the sh <laughs> all over the, the seat. seat. <laughs> yeah, and they would literally go... <gasps> and they'd just get... <laughs> That's they, quite genius, they actually. They couldn't even look at me. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> if you don't want to get a parking ticket, stick sort of sanitary pads on the glass of the windshield. But when you drive, it's a nightmare. I can't say anything. The one thing I do, I always go, oh, sorry, I don't speak English. <laughs> <laughs> In good. that accent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on the last day of term, we had this crazy idea that we were going to get onto the school roof and sleep on there and we'd be Ooh. like legends. Oh. So we all told each other's parents that we were at each other's houses and my mum and my friend's mum were like, oh, there's something going on. But my mum didn't drive. None of you drive in your family. No, it's you? for the best. <laughs> <laughs> so she rang a taxi driver. We had, like, a, a taxi driver that became, like, a bit of a friend called Little John. He was four foot seven, this guy. And then you married him. <laughs> <laughs> He came out in the middle of the night and helped my mum look for me. And it was, like, oh, in, like, a woodland near the school, and he fell down a big hole. <gasps> and oh. my mum had to, like, get all the other parents to look for little John instead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, my mum was really angry with him. She was like, I've fucking lost you now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I feel bad. And he's dead as well. <gasps> <gasps> little John is dead? Yeah, he died. Down what, a, in the down hole? The hole. <laughs> Are you serious? Did he die in the hole? <laughs> oh, he, he is. Well, that's a lot better story, isn't it? <laughs>